lot of sadness. I don't think I really fully grasped, like, after this, I won't see her again. I remember my parents being really upset. I remember my dad leaning down and giving her a kiss. That was weird. That was traumatizing. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. This is episode 21 in the ongoing series, Counting Down in Chronological Order, the timeline of the incident regarding John Monet Ramsey. Now, I'm very pleased to say that uh, we are now achieving sort of parity again with the timeline. The 31st of December 1996, 24 years ago, was the day that John Bonet was laid to rest in a uh, church in Atlanta and in the cemetery in Atlanta. It is quite easy to get confused between the memorial service in Boulder, but the one way you can differentiate them is Burke is wearing a sort of a fireman's suit and the church is kind of a sandstone building, whereas in Atlanta is kind of wearing a sort of navy blue suit. It's a far more formal setting and the church has got sort of white pillars and it's just, um, that is where the actual funeral was held. Now, what is quite interesting with the funeral service and the memorial service is there was actually video shot at both of them. And if you just think about it, a funeral is quite a private affair. The Ramses were pretty private, and yet you had video that was sort of um, made available. And you sort of got to wonder, what is that all about? Was that leaked, or was that intentional? Was the idea to show a grieving family, you know, this family is grieving, so keep your distance until they finish grieving? Um, and, uh, you know, at what point can you actually speak to them when it's sort of safe? When, when, when have they finished grieving? For me personally, what I find interesting in the footage, and I have provided a video for those on Patreon to watch both services. You can actually see the people filing out of the church in Boulder, and you can also see them in the, at the funeral service in, at, in uh, Atlanta. And um, what, what is interesting is Burke Ramsey. It is interesting seeing him in Boulder. He's, he's chewing gum, he's dressed in a fireman's outfit he actually looks quite happy he looks quite carefree and it is very interesting that he's wearing a fireman's outfit it's almost like he's playing another thing that is easy to miss when you're looking at the footage is he's actually with a little friend of his is is this little boy present at both services which sort of shows you that Burke was often accompanied by other little boys you know that they would play together and so one wonders again what was going on um, in the days leading up to the incident? Which little boys were Burke's friends? Who was playing at the house? Who was his best friend? And I guess if you were a private investigator, you'd be wondering, well, who is this boy that is with Burke at the one service? And who is the boy that is with Burke at the other service? And um, that is, I think, quite interesting in its own right. Something else that I think is interesting, maybe objectionable to some people, John Monet was actually buried in a tiara in a pageant outfit. So there was pageantry in terms of her death right till, right till the end. On the 30th of December 1998, Pam Paul was on the Dave Lucas uh, radio show and she was asked, um, why was John Monet buried in a tiara in a pageant gown? And Pam said, buried in a what? And the, the radio host said, a tiara and a pageant gown. She was in one of those pageant gowns when she was buried. And Pam said, well, you know what? The world is not going to make a judgment about that. But you've got to wonder um, what is going on where even in death, John Bonet is cast as a sort of a pageant princess. And you, you could sort of have sympathy with that and say, well, that's fine. But the other side of it is, what about just acknowledging the little girl who she was? in death instead of dressing her up and even you know you could say dressing her up in death is that is that appropriate F for a six-year-old child do you know what i'm saying now if you come back to burke ramsey's statement that he makes at the beginning of, of i played a clip which i think is from dr phil on the 20 on the 20 year anniversary i think it was in september 2016 
he was saying basically, quote, I don't think I fully grasped dot, 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 end quote. And I think that is true. I don't think he did grasp what is going on. He certainly seems like he's playful and enjoying the situation that he's in, enjoying playing with his friend. He doesn't seem to be at all distressed. Bear in mind, um, some kind of attacker, some kind of intruder is out on the loose, running around. Berg doesn't seem at all worried about it. A lot of other parents were worried about it at the time, but Berg himself doesn't seem to be at all concerned. You know, someone has killed his sister and, you know, in his own home, and you'd think that that could be quite traumatizing, difficult to sleep and difficult to trust people and, um, you know, basically just something that would cause worry and anxiety and feelings of inadequacy in a way. So what is interesting in that clip is the fact that Burke says he remembers how much his parents were crying, but he doesn't say anything about how he felt. He doesn't really talk about, in the interview with Dr. Phil, he doesn't talk about his feelings regarding John Bonet being gone. And so something else I want to just highlight before we get sort of really cracking on three different narratives in three different books in today's episode. I just want to highlight the part where Burke says, my father came and told me that John Bonet is in heaven. So I'll play that part in the kind of introduction to the segment that is on Patreon, and then I'm going to show you something that is very interesting regarding something else. But it's re related to that, but it's... Um, something that kind of contradicts that statement. So we'll come back to that. The other part that I want to kind of emphasize is he says when he saw his father bending down over the casket to kiss his sister, he felt that that was weird. So instead of, and this is the adult Berg talking about this, you know, Berg being 29 years old, he, he remembers his father kissing his sister, um, you know, where she's lying in this casket in a church and everyone is paying their respects. He, he remembers that as being weird. It's also interesting that he calls that moment traumatizing. So when he sees his father sort of parting finally, permanently with John Bonet, he calls that traumatizing. And you've got to wonder why would that be traumatizing? You know, it is a father showing his love and grief for his sister. If anything, it should be something that would be almost heartwarming. Even if you were a child, I'm sure that you would look on that and say, well, you know, it made me realize what was going on kind of thing. But to say that that was traumatizing, I don't know. I don't know about you. I find it just odd, don't you? The other thing that is definitely odd is during these interviews with uh, Dr. Phil, Burke is kind of smiling throughout. It doesn't really matter what they're talking about, whether they're talking about the funeral or anything else. Burke is smiling. And I will put it in a link from Inside Edition so that you can watch it for yourselves. I'm sure many of you have seen it anyway. But you kind of get the impression that it's the same Burke uh, 20 years later as at the memorial service. The, the Burke at the memorial service doesn't seem to know what's going on, doesn't seem to have a care in the world. You know, his sister has died, apparently in a violent, brutal, horrible way with other suggestions around that. And he seems completely immune to that. And he's smiling and he's chewing gum and he's, if anything, he's playing. And he is sort of the focus of his parents' attention in the sense that he's the only child there. And um, although they, they don't really seem to address him in the video, you don't really see them um, kind of acknowledging Burke. Although at the funeral service, I think there's a point where he is right at the end of the video. I think John Ramsey puts his arm around Burke as they're walking away. And that's that's sort of the, the sort of solitary moment where you have almost like all three family members together. And even at the memorial service, you have all three family members separate. You have Burke running along ahead of everybody else. Then Patsy's, she's being comforted. I'm not sure who the woman is beside her, but she's been comforted by somebody. And then John is in the, in the um, embrace or 
in the company of a pastor. And so all three family members are sort of separated, yet they they are there. It's just an interesting thing to to take note of. So in this episode, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to go through three narratives. We're going to go through the discussion about the funeral in Death of Innocence. We're going to go through um, Steve Thomas's experience of the funeral and just what he was talking about. It's really interesting getting Steve Thomas's account because he was actually somewhere else. He was actually in Boulder watching it on TV, in fact, at the Barn Hills. And um, John Bonet's dog jumped onto his lap while this was actually happening, almost as if the dog was saying, you know, are you going to do something? Are you going to help my owner? You know, something like that. And then the third one from Schiller's Perfect Murder, Perfect Town, just going into um, the events around Fleet White, which is definitely quite interesting. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please do like, share, leave a comment and let's get started. So I'm reading the first excerpt from Death of Innocence, Chapter 6. It's a chapter called Facing the Cameras. And if you go through a lot of the research, a lot of the narratives, a lot of the backstory, which I'm not going to go through here, the Ramses caught a bit of flack for what some people considered to be sort of choreographed events, that, that some of these services seem to be, um, you know, doing something in front of the cameras. The the media, I think, were invited to one of these events and the idea was that, or the contention was made by some that, that this was playing to the cameras, showing the Ramses grieving, right? And um, anyway, uh, if we go down to the um, bottom third of the chapter facing the cameras, I think um, John is writing about Patsy getting up and went down by John Monet's coffin and knelt to pray. And John says he, he didn't know why, why she did that. He said we were both in shock and medicated so we could function without breaking into tears. Now, I don't get that sense, especially looking at the memorial service. John seems to be fully in control of himself. In fact, he seems to be almost smiling. He almost seems to be the sort of benign presence there. He's shaking the pastor's hand and he, he seems to be very much in, uh, you know, control of himself. Patsy is also apparently smiling. She, she seems also to be um, not overwrought, certainly when she appears out the door of the memorial service. But there are moments you can see when she's hugging people where she, she sort of, um, the facade sort of breaks breaks a little bit or cracks and she seems to, you know, the, she seems to be overcome with emotion. But of the three people, Patsy seems to be emotional and John and Burke don't, don't really seem, well, they don't seem to be, they don't seem to be grieving. Um, Burke and his father don't really seem to be appropriately emotional, although you could argue that, that there is no appropriate. One thing that I think you can definitely say is that John and Patsy look very different coming out of the memorial service to how they look when they appear on CNN on the 1st of January. And we're going to be dealing with that, that interview tomorrow. But they look uh, suitably, they're, they're sort of suitable or appropriate gravitas when they, and they both look kind of heartbroken when they sit down in front of the television, whereas when they come out the church, they, they kind of, it almost looks like they've come out of a movie in a way, especially Burke in that sense. But in his, in his statement here, he says, we were both still in shock and medicated so we could function without breaking into tears. I think it's true that Patsy was medicated. I'm not quite sure if John was. And anyway, he says she didn't remember kneeling by the coffin. After the service, as we prepared to ha leave the church, this is something John is writing, I realized the sanctuary had been packed with hundreds of people. And then he says, outside the church, the media swarmed. Reporters were everywhere. And... Um, this is in um, 
the, at, at the Peachtree Presbyterian Church in Atlanta, Georgia. So even though that is something he's saying, um, there's not a terrible amount of footage of them coming out of the church there. It feels as though people were filming things from a, a really great distance away. And it's quite difficult to find footage of that funeral today. It definitely is quite difficult to find to find things. There are a lot of links that have... Bear in mind it is 24 years ago, but there are a lot of links that are no longer working. So John Andrew says he had to put himself between one obnoxious photographer and Burke. And that is something that the detective, Detective Steve Thomas, also mentioned. I must say I was under the impression that this happened at the memorial service, not at the uh, funeral service. As far as I know, um, what's his name, Steve Thomas wasn't at the funeral service. But I could be wrong. So if we go to the next page, page 44, there's a quick reference to fleet arriving in Atlanta. And this is a quote from page 44, referring to fleet, quote, he kept arguing that we didn't need lawyers to defend us. His solution, meaning fleet solution, was for Patsy and me to go on national television and tell our story. Since he was convinced that the media was rapidly painting us in guilty colors. If people could see us, he argued, he being fleet, they would be able to get the story into perspective. And um, he, he talks about feeling a bit like a ping pong ball and that he felt horrible guilt that he couldn't protect his daughter. And um, so anyway, he goes on saying that Fleet had convinced him that a public appearance was necessary and um, that he that John then realized he's right. I, I've got to protect my family's reputation. And so we're going to deal with that tomorrow. Now, there's um, there's quite a lot of controversy around this. Fleet actually denies that that he said that. As far as I know, Fleet didn't. It wasn't Fleet's idea that the Ramses go on CNN. In fact, the Ramses got a lot of criticism for doing that. And and so in their book, they blame Fleet. That, you know that it was his idea. I think Fleet's story is that. He was telling them they need to stop hiding behind their lawyers and, and go home, go to Boulder. And um, if anything, face the media in Boulder, not go into CNN and, um, you know, talk to their lawyers and all that kind of thing. So, so I'm not going to go further into Death of Innocence, um, the, the Death of Innocence version here. I will come back to it just regarding that point made where... Burke Ramsey says, my father told me John Bonet was in heaven. We're going to come back to that, but in the Patreon uh, segment. Before we continue, I think we're at uh, almost 20 minutes before we deal with the Steve Thomas's version of events. And it really is quite touching where he talks about he is actually at the, the neighbors. He's actually um, visiting the barn hills when John Bonet's dog... Um, kind of approaches him and they're actually watching the funeral service uh, on television. So I'm going to take you through that um, kind of in his words, obviously just one little snippet here and there um, in the next segment. So if you're on Patreon, you, you'll get to see that and hear that. Um, bear in mind, as I said, tomorrow we're going to be dealing with that famous CNN interview and it's really interesting especially the extended interview many of us have seen kind of the same clip over and over again but there's an extended interview and there's also what the interviewer said in terms of that interview in terms of um, what he perceived and what the Ramsey said to him kind of between takes so we'll deal with that tomorrow for those on YouTube thanks for listening I wish you a very happy new year. I hope uh, it's a better 2021 than it's been a 2020. Uh, it does look as though there are a few good things to look forward to, just given how things are, are going. So keep the faith, and I will see you tomorrow 
in 2021 for the next episode in this series. Thank you for listening. My dad came and told me, Jamine is in heaven now, and he started crying.